Hello and welcome. This webinar is titled Importance of Muscle Mass to Survivorship, and today's guest speaker is Dr. Carla Prado, Registered Dietitian and Director of the Human Nutrition Research Unit. She is an Assistant Professor and Campus Alberta Innovates Program Chair in Nutrition, Food, and Health at the University of Alberta. Without further ado, I will now turn this webinar over to Carla. Thank you, Carla. Well, thank you everyone for watching our webinar. We're gonna talk a little bit about the importance of muscle to cancer survivorship. And one of the ways for uh, um, us to measure our health is looking at something called body mass index, which is a calculation of our weight to height in meter square. And that tells us a little bit about, you know, where we are compared to if you have excess body weight or not. And there are some limitations of using body mass index, and one of them is this obvious one seen here, and you can have a bodybuilder on a scale versus a person with obesity, and they can have exactly the same BMI. However, it's very obvious that one person is heavier because of muscle and the other person is heavier because of excess fat. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is much more subtle or differences that are like not as obvious as this one that we've just seen. And what we know is that people can have exactly the same body weight as shown in, in this image here. But when you look at their body composition, the proportion of muscle and fat can be quite different. So this figure is to show that at any given BMI, we can have a person who has a very little muscle mass, a person who has average muscle mass, and a person who has a lot of muscle mass. And on the other end of the distribution, we can also have people who have obvious very different body weights, but when you look on the inside, the amount of muscle or lean mass that they have is exactly the same. And we're particularly interested in this study, uh, studying the importance of low muscle mass as it's depicted in this figure here, that at any given body weight we can have. So again, this can be hidden behind the bulk of body weight. And when we think of low muscle and who is at risk for low muscle, perhaps the idea that comes to most of our minds is of someone that is elderly and very frail, because we all know that indeed we lose muscle as we age. Uh, however, there's again losses of muscle of someone that have low muscle it's not necessarily an elderly person or is not necessarily someone that's very frail. In fact, what we know now is that low muscle can be observed at any age, at any body weight, at any cancer stage or treatment. So again, a lot of us may be at risk for having low muscle uh, mass. And the importance of muscle, the reason why we're dedicating some time today to talk about muscle is because muscle is a very important organ in our body. It's important not only for strength and balance, uh, it's important for your posture, but it's important to give you power, to help you do activities on a daily basis, but it also uh, helps regulate blood glucose levels and it's a reservoir of proteins. So there's a lot of things going on that are related to the amount of muscle that we have in our body body. And research has consistently shown us that low muscle mass is a very important and independent predictor of poor outcomes. So even if you control for other things that we know are important for outcomes, we know that low muscle uh, relates to how well we're going to battle the condition or the disease and how, how well our overall health is going to be. So consistently, the literature have shown us that low muscle mass is associated with physical impairment and disability. You, if you are hospitalized, you're going to have greater length of hospital stay. If you're, uh, uh, you know, if you again have any uh, procedures done at the hospital, you're going to need more rehabilitation if you have low muscle. If you're operated on, you're going to have post-operative complications. In terms of cancer, there is evidence that low muscle is associated with disease progression and also treatment toxicity. And it's also associated with poor quality of life as well as shorter survival. So it's a very important organ in our body. 
And there are several things that leads to muscle loss. So as I've mentioned before, as we age, we all lose muscles. So uh, there is associated, like aging is associated with loss of muscle, although we can minimize that. A cancer is associated with muscle loss. Cancer treatment is associated with muscle loss. Lack of physical activity is associated with muscle loss. And poor nutrition is associated with muscle loss, among other factors as well. But today, because I am a dietitian, we're going to be talking a little bit about the importance of nutrition to sustain or to prevent and to reverse muscle loss in cancer. Now, a lot of people are a bit skeptical about it. They think, you know, can nutrition really prevent muscle loss? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely yes. Nutrition is actually essential to sustain muscle mass. So not only the quantity of nutrients that are putting inside our bodies, but also the quality of nutrients is essential to sustain muscle. And we have a lot called the muscle beauty nutrients that are being explored for the prevention and the treatment of muscle loss in people who have cancer. And these are just some examples of these nutrients. So for example, protein, amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. We have something called beta hydroxy beta methyl butyrate, which is short, uh, we can use the abbreviation H and B, creatine, vitamin D, as well as omega-3 fatty acids. So a lot of these nutrients are being explored uh, for the prevention and the treatment of muscle loss. But today I'm going to focus a little bit more on protein. So we know that protein, again, uh, is essential to sustain muscle. And uh, however, we have to think about uh, healthful choices or healthful sources of protein. So the recommendations is that we should be eating lean sources of protein. And again, the higher the amount of protein in the diet, that's associated with higher muscle mass as well. Now, there is evidence to suggest that we should be spreading our intake of protein throughout the day so versus just eating it eating it in one meal. So a lot of us tend to eat a lot of our protein at dinner time, but spreading throughout the day is much better. And there are different recommendations out there for healthy uh, individuals or meaning for the general population. The way we uh, calculate the amount of protein that we need is based on body weight. So as you can see here, for the general population, the recommendation is that we consume 0.8 grams of protein for every kilo uh, or kilogram of body weight per day. So you multiply your weight by 0.8 and then you would know how many grams of protein you need on a daily basis. But many suggest that we need more protein in older individuals. So the recommendation for healthy elderly individuals is about 1 to 1.2, so a bit higher compared to 0.8 here, grams per kilogram body weight per day. Now, for people who have cancer, what we know, what we've seen in our recent guidelines is that uh, they need more protein, again, because they are susceptible to losing muscle. So the recommendations that have been established is 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilogram body weight per day. And these are recommendations from uh, uh, European guidelines on nutrition in cancer patients. Now, how does that look like? So again, as I've mentioned, in order to calculate the amount of protein that you need, you should be multiplying. So you get your weight in kilograms and you multiply that by either 1.2 or 1.5. So that's a range. So within, if you are within the range, you're meeting the recommendations. And that would be, for example, for a female who has 75 kilos would be about 90 grams. And for a male who has 85 kilos would be about 120 grams of protein. And then we need to know how many grams the por each portion size would have. Um, and then, for example, these are just some examples of meat or sources of meat, dairy, and meat and alternatives of how you can get this uh, protein or this quantity of protein from. So, for example, three ounces of chicken breast has about 26 grams. So you can just multiply and calculate so that at the end of the day, you're meeting the amount that you've calculated. Also remembering that we have alternative sources of protein. It's not only about meat. We have legumes. You know, a combination of legumes are a very good source of protein. So tofu, eggs, peanut uh, um, or nut butters, for example, and shelled nuts and seeds as well are very good sources.
Now, according to the Dietitians of Canada eating guidelines after a prostate cancer diagnosis, we should be also limiting animal fats like fatty meat, skin on poultry, uh, high fat dairy, and baked goods made with butter, and also eliminating processed meats like deli meat, bacon, and sausage. Something very important in addition to muscle is our bone health. So bone and muscle health, they may be going hand in hand. So it's also important to remember that hormone treatment for prostate cancer can actually weaken your bones. So you should be getting the recommended amount of calcium and vitamin D to keep your bones strong. And how that's done is we should be eating or drinking food sources of calcium every day. So milk and milk products such as yogurt um, and calcium 45 soy or other plant-based beverages are a good source. When choosing milk products, as I've just mentioned, we should be choosing the low fat most often. Uh, Calcium supplements should be used if you're not getting enough from food. Remember to always try food first. Uh, eat or drinking food sources of vitamin D every day is very important. So milk or 45 soy beverages or other plant-based beverages, fatty fish and margarine are important sources. And if you're over the age of 50, it's recommended that you take a daily vitamin D supplement of 400 international units in addition to food sources of vitamin D. So here I've just listed some excellent sources of calcium also recommended by the Dietitians of Canada. So this is the amount of calcium per day that we should be consuming. So in this column here, we have the recommended by age group. So uh, people from 19 up to 70 years of age should be consuming 1,000 milligrams of calcium per day and people over the age of 70, 1,200. Now you need to stay below these numbers here and the amount of vitamin D should be 600 international units if you are from age 19 to 70 and eight international units if you are 70 years or older. And again, as I've mentioned before, always choose food first instead of supplements. You're getting a lot of benefits from vitamins and minerals and everything else that all the other uh, nutrients that food can give us. Now again, according to the Dietitians of Canada, a great recommendation is how your plate should be looking like. You should fill half of your plate with vegetables and fruit, one quarter of your plate with whole grains, and one quarter of your plate with meat and alternatives at each meal. Remembering, you know, milk and alternatives on the side and water as well are very important. Keep hydrated. In terms of exercise, uh, a recommendation is at least 30 to 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity five times per week. And the evidence in prostate cancer is that both strength exercise or res resistance exercise and light aerobic exercise improves your quality of life. So you feel less fatigued or less tired, it improves your strength and also improves how well you're functioning. So it improves your physical function as well. So just to finalize, uh, we've discussed the importance of preserving muscle mass. There's a lot of evidence out there of how muscle is important for our health. So eating well, uh, maintaining a physical activity uh, is a very important very important to sustain muscle. We are focusing on nutrition, of course, but of course, uh, the more you exercise, the more muscle you're building. Uh, proper nutrition can and will help you prevent muscle mass loss. It will improve your functionality and it can have important benefits to uh, outcomes such as the response to treatment or quality of life. So we truly believe that proper nutrition can sustain or improve the survivorship and improve your experience treating cancer right, while you're dealing with cancer. And nutrition or a balanced diet, diet and physical activity play an important role in preserving muscle mass. We've mentioned that before. And that's all that I had to discuss uh, with you today. I would just like to acknowledge my colleagues and I will be looking forward to receiving questions from you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Carla. And at this time, I would like to remind our viewers that if you are looking for further information regarding prostate cancer care, please visit our website where you can download and order our various resources. Please note there are also resources attached to this webinar on the bottom right of your screen. If you're interested in viewing more, please visit www.prostatecancer.ca slash expert angle. And once again, thank you, Carla. And this now concludes today's presentation, and we thank you all for joining.